when King Saul and all of Israel met their match. Goliath of Gath. <laughs> what are we going to do? Mommy. I'm not going to go out there. He's huge. Because I'm the king and I said so. Well, I got to send somebody. Sure. Send the kid. It's his funeral. Uh, good luck, sport. And so without any armor or giant fighting experience, David the Teenage Warrior responded to Goliath's challenge. Lord be with me. Hey, you! I don't care if you have a sword. A really, really big sword. I come in the name of the Lord, the God of the armies of Israel. You ticked him off! The Lord will show everyone here that I don't need a sword, I don't need a spear. All I need is him. The battle is his. He's gonna take you down. I've got a sling in my pocket and the Lord in my heart. Well, I can see that you're ten feet tall. Could probably tear me apart. But there's a sling in my left hand and a stone in my right. And I'm standing on the solid rock It's by his power that I fight Then the whole world will know That there is a God in Israel And just like that, Goliath was dead There is a God in Israel The Philistines were routed in battle, their big bad giant fallen by a puny shepherd. Well, Saul wasted very little time in making David a member of his royal court. Smart political move. And on top of that, he made him a bigwig in his army. Saul practically adopted David as his son. David had success in everything that he did. Ready? The people loved to cheer on the troops as they marched in from their lopsided victories. They sang in praise of their valiant heroes. We're back. Oh. Saul is a man of great power. Thank you. Thank you very much. He stands as tall as any tower. Six foot seven to be exact, but who's counting? He's handsome and brave. And our lives he does save. And for the most part, all of our enemies cower. Just a big giant, that's all. The Philistine situation is all under control. Saul is a man of great death. He's killed 10,000 and yet. Now David's a man of great strength. He's killed 10,000 just today. He slew that man Goliath when nobody else would try it. The Lord is upon him, I'd say. And David's a man of great honor. He has success wherever he goes. Because he started at the bottom, now he's leader over thousands. This man is the hero of heroes. And all the ladies cry. David, save us from the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Jebusites, Arameans, and Moabites. Give me a night. And David's a man of great passion. There's no one like him in all of the land. Because now the Philistines are cowering the first time in a long, long time. That's why he's our number one man. I said that's why he's our number one man. That's why he's Israel's number one man. And all the ladies cry. Yeah, they save us from the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Jebusites, Arameans, and Moabites. Give me the eyes. The Edomites, the Malachites, the Syrians, the Zobites, the Parasites, the Flying Kites. The men in tights. Saul's slain his thousands. David's slain his ten thousands. Saul's slain his thousands. David's slain 
his ten thousand souls, slain his thousands. David slain his ten thousand souls. David. Well, for some reason, the king started to grow jealous of David. And Saul's beloved children didn't help matters much. In fact, they were the biggest David fans of all. Saul's oldest son, Jonathan, liked David far more than he liked dear old dad. And Saul's daughter, Michal, jumped at the chance to marry David, Israel's most eligible bachelor. Well, Saul's jealousy began to overwhelm him to the point where he could hardly sleep. Ironically enough, the only remedy for his sleepless nights was to have David tuck him in with a bedtime song. Among David's many enviable talents, he was a great musician. So without David's music, there would be no sleep, just tossing and turning and shouting at the shadows in the corner of the room. Saul was basically going crazy. David's music was the only thing that brought peace, something that was very foreign to the king's life. It could be this bed! <coughs> The music only helped for a short time, and one night, Saul kindly asked David to... Stop playing that musical pin you to the wall! And he hurled a spear at David's head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, come back. I'll be nice. Luckily, the sleep-deprived Saul missed. Afraid for his life, David escaped the king's court and fled far away to the village of Ramah. Lord, what's going on? The king just tried to kill me. You're anointed. What am I going to do? D deliver me, Lord. Protect me. I, I, I don't need a lot. I don't need to live in a king's court. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anyway. I don't need riches. I don't need fame. I just need you. Can I dwell in your house? I don't even have a home. Lord, I just want to be in your presence forever and stare at your beauty forever. One thing I desire is to gaze on the beauty of God. One thing that I ask is to live in your house my whole life, Lord. That's the only quiet place that you will hide me. And I will, I will shout, I will shout for joy. We'll see your goodness, Lord. In my lifetime, I believe I'm going to see your goodness in this land. So I'll wait. I'll be waiting. 
Jonathan, David's closest friend, I mentioned him before, he was pretty sure that his father had cooled off a bit and that David could return home safely. So he devised a plan to figure out just what was going on inside the king's head. David. Jonathan. Tomorrow is the new moon festival. Go to our hangout spot in the field and hide by the rock. When my father sees that you're not at the table, he'll react. Hopefully by his reaction, I'll know what he's thinking, but you know my dad. Anyway, the next day I'll come to the field. I'll shoot three arrows near the rock. Wait a minute, Don't you're worry, a terrible I'm shot. I'm a good shot. Anyway, I'll send someone to go fetch them. Now, if I say to him, the arrows are on this side of you, then everything is okay, and as surely as the Lord lives, you'll be totally safe. But if I say to him, go, go further, the arrows are beyond you. And that means your life is in danger, and you're going to have to disappear, my friend. Jonathan, my one true friend, a better brother to me than any of my meat-headed relatives, gentle Jonathan, no wonder you're related to your own father, how many times I've smiled in your company, the sword, it's like having him by my side. It's his, after all, the very one he used to dispatch 20 Philistines after climbing the sheer cliffs of Bozes. Jonathan in a scrawny armor bearer. I wish I could have seen him. We routed that entire Philistine army. Jonathan and I, we fought many battles side by side. Then in glorious battles. Real and imagined some of the greatest imaginary battles took place in this very field. Our siege against the Philistine fortress made entirely out of impenetrable <sighs> diamonds. The army of bear people. Our fire-breathing prophets of Baal. Now they proved to be quite a match. Sometimes we sing in battle. Jonathan's not what you would call a naturally talented singer. His pitch wanders like a wide-eyed sheep. But I know God delights in his music. The Philistines have grown to hate it. Oh, they laughed at first. Look, they'd say, Israel, God's chosen people, sends musicians to fight us. What, will they make our ears bleed with their woeful melodies? Perhaps they will hit us over the head with a lute, or poke out our eyes with a wooden flute. Well, you have to give them credit. That's pretty witty for a Philistine. And while they were doubled over laughing, we would put an end to their music listening days. It's to the point where all an Israeli soldier has to do is squeak out a few notes of a tune, and the Philistines begin to run like lizards. Instead of making musicians into warriors, we've made our warriors into musicians. Oh, Jonathan. This belt is his. This robe is his. I guess I'd be naked right now if it weren't for his generosity. He should hate me. He really should. My own father had practically adopted him. Now we're in competition for the throne. I don't want the throne. I don't want the throne. I want my friend. He would do he anything, would do anything, for, anything me. for me. And I, and I for, for him. him. Go, go quickly, go further. The arrows are beyond you. Go in peace, my friend. Jonathan, nothing will ever come between us. Surely as the Lord lives. Remember our covenant. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not want for anything. For he is my shepherd, and I will dwell in his house forever and ever. For he is my shepherd, he will lead me on through the shadows wash away my fears and comfort me the Lord is my shepherd I will not want for anything for he is my shepherd and I will dwell in house forever and ever for he is my shepherd and so David fled to Nob 
to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech fed David and his men and also gave him Goliath's sword. Then David escaped to the enemy territory of the Philistines to Ashish, king of Gath. Now, David was afraid that the Philistines might recognize him because of the whole killing Goliath thing, so he pretended to be insane, of course. <coughs> then he left Gath, <coughs> stopped pretending to be insane and escaped to the cave of Adalim. His family met him there along with many outcasts, lowlifes, people running from the law, people in debt. Nice to have you on board. Nice to meet you. Concerned for his family's safety, he dropped his parents off at Moab. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Then off to the forest in Hereth of Judah, over there. Uh, then he met up with his band of some 600 outcasts and battled the Philistines at Kila. Now Saul heard about a battle and began to pursue David, so David fled to the desert of Maon, you know, just north of Eshtemo and east of Judah. Then to the strongholds of Engedi where David had the opportunity to kill Saul as Saul was freshening up in a cave. <laughs> but David spared his life and fled back to Maon. Then he met and married a smart and lovely woman named Abigail. <laughs> la, 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 la. And once again, Saul pursued David. And once again, David had the opportunity to kill Saul and did not. Tired of fleeing from Saul, David escaped back to the enemy territory of the Philistines to Ashish, king of Gath. <laughs> this time, he did not pretend to be insane. Instead, he befriended the Philistines and gained their trust. I'm David. How you doing? In turn, they gave him his very own city, which was soon after burned, raided, and plundered by a group of Amalekites. <laughs> so after many hard years of exile fighting and all of this running around, David was just about at the end of his rope. I have the king of Israel after my head. I'm constantly battling Philistines, 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 Philistines! And those wretched Amalekites, they've taken everything. My, my own men are ready to desert me or kill me. Oh, get a hold of yourself, David. I need to pray. I need to pray. Lord, hear my prayer. Deliver me and rescue me. Shelter me, don't abandon me. And save me from my enemy. Those snarling dogs have all surrounded me. Just make them scatter some some lightning. Break the teeth in their mouths, oh God. Tear them out, those big fangs they've got. Chop off all their wicked, slattering lips. And cut out every slimy, boastful tongue. Turn them into gooey, slithering slugs that melt away in the burning sun. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Deliver me and rescue me. Shelter me, don't abandon me. And save me from my enemies. On their heads rain down some fiery coals. Burning the sulfur, let it fill their nose. Beat them down into a dusty pulp. And spew them out into the roads like mud. Break the arm of the wicked men. With arrows shoot them in their hind end. Let death throw them a big surprise party. And drag them to their graves. Alive. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Deliver me and rescue me. Shelter me, don't abandon me. And save me from my enemy. Me. How long will you hide your 
was a huge battle between the Philistines and the Israelites. The fighting grew fierce around King Saul and he and his sons were killed. David heard the news. His heart mourned the death of his friend Jonathan. He even grieved over the king even after all those years of Saul trying to kill him. David still honored him. Saul had been God's anointed after all. So after 10 hard years of exile, fighting, running and hiding, David was finally free. You're free? I don't really feel like it. About this time, Israel was in turmoil. The southern kingdom of Judah made David their king and fought to convince the northern kingdom and all of Saul's heirs to jump on the bandwagon. The nation was divided. But after seven years of civil war, all of Israel rallied behind David, and David, son of Jesse, was finally crowned king of Israel. my shepherd, I will not want for anything, for he is my shepherd, and I will dwell in his house forever and ever, for he is my shepherd, he anoints my hand. With the oil of his presence, my cup overflows with his love. Lord, I can't be a king. I'm not ready yet. I grew up on a farm. I've been living in the wilderness. I can't lead all these people. David, just be their shepherd. Lead them and guide them. You know how to care for sheep. Protect my people, Israel, and shield them from their enemies. For you are their shepherd king. So people call me king. King I am. But every day I wake up and I say, I'm just a shepherd. I'm shepherding. That's all this is. Well, the Lord made David a mighty king. Every enemy he came against, he would snap like a twig. He had the Philistines on their heels. 
There was, however, one city that no one dared touch, Jerusalem. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Now, this city was filled with ugly, scary Jebusite bullies. Har. Yikes. The walls of Jerusalem alone were enough to discourage an entire army, but in traditional David fashion, he waltzed up to the walled city of Jerusalem and completely wiped it out. How does he do that? He then turned it into Israel's new capital city, dubbed appropriately enough... The city of David. How creative. So they got to work building new houses and, and structures, building new roads and battlements. But David's heart was set on one thing, making a place for the Lord, a tent for the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God. David was bringing the Ark back to Israel. Lift up your heads, O oh you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The, the Lord, Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in, in battle. battle. Who is this King of glory? The, the Lord, Lord Almighty, Almighty, He is the is King, King of, of glory. glory. Sing the Lord, sing praises. Sing praises. paid him tribute, there was nothing that he could not have. He was famous. Famous. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's hard to take all of this in. What more could I want? to taste, but to touch, oh, I feel, feel so much, I must have, I must taste, I'm a king, no need to wait, Two men lived in a certain little village. They knew each other. They weren't good friends or anything, but they were very different from one another. One man lived in a big house sitting on a lush, fertile piece of land. He was more rich than he knew what to do with. He had sheep and cattle. The other man was not so much. He and his cute little family lived in a goatskin tent on 
basically a pile of dirt. But their pride and joy was a little lamb that he had bought by saving up several months' wages. Now, this lamb wasn't treated like your average livestock. They raised it. They fed it right from the table. It drank from their cups. They even looked a little spot at the edge of the bed for it to sleep with a cramped but cozy family. It was like one of the family. Well, one day, this traveler shows up. And he had developed quite an appetite on his long, dusty journey. And just his luck, he happened upon the magnificent homestead of the rich man. He had noticed all of those tasty-looking sheep fed and bred to plump perfection. So, the stranger asked, I hope you don't mind my saying, but you look pretty well off. Um, would it put you out of, w could I eat over? Well, the rich man agreed to host the meal. But instead of sacrificing one of his own sheep, he sent one of his servants across town to take the lamb that belonged to the poor man and his family the one in the goatskin tent. And so the rich man stole the poor man's lamb and prepared a feast for himself and for the stranger. What? How could he do such a thing? That man must pay at least four times what the lamb was worth. He deserves to die as God is my witness. This man is you, David. You. This is what the Lord says. I made you king out of nothing. I delivered you from Saul and from all of your enemies. I gave you his house, this entire kingdom. I handed over to you. And if that would have been too little, I would have given you more. I would have given you so much more. David, why have you done this wicked thing? You have killed an innocent man and taken his wife as your own? Because of this, the sword will never depart from your household. And your family will cause you so much pain. David, it didn't have to be like this. I would have given you so much more. Oh, God. Have mercy on me. I know you're merciful. I've done horrible things. You probably can't even look at me. Give me your judgment. I deserve whatever you have for me. I was born rotten. Cleanse me, God. Only you can make me clean. Why do the snow? Give me a, a, a new heart, a, a clean heart. Pure heart and a new spirit, steady and strong. Don't leave me. You can't leave me. Please don't cast me from your presence. Restore me with the, the joy of your salvation. I've known that joy. Fill me with your spirit. Then, then, then I, I, I will go out and, and tell people your ways. I'll shout it till they come running back to you. <laughs> Save me, God. What have I done? I've killed an innocent man and taken his wife as my own. Save me. You are the God who saves. Then I will sing of your righteousness. Just open my lips and you will hear praise. I will bring a thousand sacrifices and offerings. But I know that's not what you want. A broken and humbled heart. That is what you desire. And that is all I can do. Please, Lord, let Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then we will bring righteous sacrifices and offerings to please you. I want to please you. David, there's something that I need to do. I have sinned. I have sinned against the Lord. The, the Lord has taken away your sins. But David, the consequences for what you have done for you and for your family. My family. Your child. The son born to you in Bathsheba. He's very ill. My son. 
David pleaded and fasted and prayed before the Lord for the life of his newborn child. He refused to eat or sleep. And he spent the long nights on his knees on the cold ground. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your gentle seventh day, the child died. David ended his fast. He got up, washed, changed his clothes, and went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. You can't bring him back. Well, one day I will be with him. Lord, I just want to be in your presence. It's all I've ever really wanted. Sometimes I forget. Please forgive me. Without you, I'm, I'm nothing. I just want to be in your house, even if for just one day. A house, let, let, let me build you one. One that's fitting, this is, this is a tent. I live in a palace and you live in a tent. That's not right. Lord, let me build you a beautiful house. Don't tell my servant David that I instead greatest name on earth. For this is what the Lord says you
My family, that you have brought us this far. Oh, am I your Lord? That you will look on me as if I were the most exalted of men. How lovely is your house! Thank you so much for the privilege of sharing the story with you. Vanessa and I um, call our theater ministry Theater for the Thirsty because we believe that everybody on the face of this earth is hungry and thirsty for real life. And that's why we tell these stories. That's why we do what we do. And that's what we've been doing as a full-time ministry for almost 25 years now. So That's why he acts crazy sometimes. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Only on stage and occasionally backstage. Um, but uh, and I think we've been coming to Woodcrest probably for the past, what, 12, 13 years, so it is an honor and a joy to come back to share these stories with you. Um, Vanessa and I are going to be out at a table right out there, so please come say hi to us. Um, if you're a young person and you're interested in the arts um, and you have questions about um, where to get plugged in or things that you are excited about, we'd love to chat with you. Uh, that's where the seeds started to get planted for us about a, a life in the arts, and um, God has given us these gifts, all of us, gift of creativity and imagination. And sometimes uh, we just need someone to encourage us <laughs> in that pursuit. So uh, please come say hi. Or find us on our website, theaterforthethirsty.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, we have CDs and DVDs of the shows that we've been doing for the past 25 years. Um, so uh, those are available. Those are prob You probably have them all. But in case you don't or you lost one or something or you want to give some to a friend, 
Um, those are all back there. We also have a newer show, um, I, Servant the Enemy, that we did with our entire family. I don't know that we did that here, but um, that's one of our newer shows. So that's a show you can stream. And, um, and so there's a QR code back there. You can scan that or also go to our website, theaterforthethirsty.com, and you can rent or buy. Uh, but that's a really delightful show that we only toured for a few years because we did it with our kids. So we'd love uh, to have you check that show out. Thank you so much for having us, and have a great Sunday. Yes, God bless. Well, that was awesome. Uh, let's give one more round of applause for Theater of the Thirsty. Just, just again, they're going to be back at a table. They got CDs, so if you like what you heard, go check them out. One more reminder, you can find John Burt again in the cafe. He's taking pictures for our online directory so we can put a face to all of your names. Make sure to go and do that this morning. Well, besides that, have a great week serving the Lord. We'll see you next Sunday.